Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerak Juthani. I'm an internal medicine doc at Stanford. And today I want to talk to you about the importance of ultrasound in clinical practice. And specifically, I want to talk about point of care ultrasound, POCUS. And the reason I want to talk to you about POCUS is because I have been using ultrasound since my very first day of residency. When I first started, it was this overwhelming tool that I just didn't know entirely how to use. But now after three years, I have realized that it has totally changed the way I practice. And it actually helps me a lot with patient care. Before I get too much into the weeds, I want to let you know that I'm working with Butterfly, which is one of the companies that makes these devices to ultimately make this video. I'm not getting any monetary compensation from them, but the reason I decided to work with them is because I've been using a Butterfly device for the last three years, and it has really augmented the way I approach patient care. So I just figured we both share the same mission, so we may as well work together on creating a video series like this one. You may be wondering, how much experience do I really have with ultrasound? Well, I'm still three years in, but I've made this entire video series, it's four videos, um, that focuses on how I utilize ultrasound. Ultrasound is this brand new tool that now on top of getting the history from the patient, doing a full physical exam, I now add on ultrasound as this other thing that I do with all my patients, because that combined with my physical exam and the history that the patient is telling me really helps with my deductive reasoning. There's so many ways that ultrasound can be applied and I go over all of them in this video series. But just to give you a very broad overview, there are many clinical uses of ultrasound. There's a cardiac view, right? You can look at different chambers of the heart. You can look at it in two dimensions and it actually tells you if someone has a good ejection fraction, if someone has a decreased ejection fraction, if someone has a pericardial effusion, or sometimes it can even show you if someone has regurgitation. Many of these point of care ultrasound models, including this one, when you connect them to your phone, you can turn on Doppler mode and that can actually show you whether or not there's evidence of regurgitation. Similarly, you can also utilize ultrasound for lung imaging. When I look at the lungs, you can tell if someone has B lines, which are signs of potential volume overload or even pneumonia. Other times, you can put the ultrasound at the mid axillary line and see if someone has a pleural effusion. Again, ultrasound is fascinating and it allows you to pick up on these things. And it sometimes even allows you to see pleural effusions that may not be as significant on chest x ray. It's pretty awesome. The last two aspects that I use ultrasound for is abdominal imaging, and sometimes you can also use it for what's called a focus assessment with, son with sonography for trauma, which is known as the FAST exam. In abdominal ultrasound, you can often take a look at the gallbladder if you wanted to assess for gallstones, and in the FAST exam, you can actually, as you know, look at the heart, you can look at the liver to see if there's any fluid around the liver, which would be ascites or maybe even blood. You can look at the lung to see if there's parallel effusions. You can then look at the spleen, look at the left quadrant and ensure there's no fluid on that side. And you can even look at the bladder and make sure that someone's not retaining. I wanna give you some examples of just how useful ultrasound has been for me. This method on top of the physical exam as I said, truly changes the way I sometimes anticipate I'm gonna treat a patient. If I'm hearing crackles for a patient and my ultrasound, ultrasound shows B lines and it also shows a pleural effusion, I'm much more likely to diurese them than just if my physical exam showed that on its own. So I just want you to think about it, right? So let's go through some of these. So look at this cardiac image. You can see that this is a parasternal long image and then I'm rotating to a parasternal short. And in both of these images, these are real life images captured by the butterfly. But briefly, the first image allows me to look at the, the ejection fraction. I can tell you it's grossly normal. And with this parasternal short, I can tell you that there's no evidence of right heart strain. These are things that you could have never figured out had you not been able to look physically at the image. With this one, I'm looking at the bladder, and again, this is a, totally an image captured on someone's phone, and you can physically see what it's showing. And with some of the new butterflies, you can actually guess what the volume is. It will automatically tell you what the volume is in the bladder. So if you think that a patient is retaining, you can actually use this and say like, hey, there's over 500 cc's of urine in there. Maybe we should straight cat that patient. It's pretty amazing. And now here's another one, which is the lung ultrasound. This allows you to look at the lung and tells you if there's any B lines. These new ultrasounds, including the IQ3, have a feature that allows you to tell if there's B lines that's suggestive of volume overload or something funky going on that's messing with the lung interface. So hopefully this kind of gives you a 30,000 foot overview as to why I think ultrasound is so powerful. I often overlap this with my physical exam as well as my history and the labs to ultimately guide patient care. And I truly think a lot more residents should be doing this. So I hope you thought this was helpful. If you did, please drop a like, comment, and I will continue to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.